I think the most important part of this kind of networking that's sort of casual and informal is staying in touch with people. Now, for small business owners, maybe it's having a, a newsletter or a social feed where you're uh, posting things that, that are relevant and of interest to a potential audience and just have, putting your flag up that like, this is what I think about and do and talk about. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a great one. Our guest worked at Google when there were just 500 employees. She was also Twitter's editorial director at one point, and she is the author of Taking the Work Out of Networking, Your Guide to Making and Keeping Great Connections. I'm honored to have Karen Wickery on the show. Hey, thank you, Michael, so much. It's great to have you, Karen, and, and such an interesting career journey, talking about technology, what you've likely seen uh, throughout your career. Very interesting. I'd love to hear uh, a little bit of your career journey leading up to this point. Sure. I've always been a writer and editor, regardless of whatever job I had in the past, and my introduction to the world of technology businesses happened about 30-ish years ago. I had moved to San Francisco. I was running a nonprofit. And one of my board members hired me away from that. And he happened to be the publisher of a couple of the early personal computer magazines, you know, when personal computers were first kind of reaching the mass market. There were just I mean, hundreds and hundreds of computer magazines. It was a world I knew nothing about. But my background, in, in his mind, lent itself to this world, even though I barely touched a computer at that point. But I have to say, once I was in the world of magazines that were reviewing software and you know new kinds of computers and whatnot, I found it mystifying, but also just fast moving and interesting. And all the people in the early days were not experts, did not, I mean, nobody had years of experience or a lot of English majors, it turned out, and that they were my kindred spirits. And so I really liked that world. And I worked as a, a ghost writer and a sort of liaison to the editorial teams at the magazines. Anyway, from there, I just kind of stayed with tech and had a number of jobs and freelance positions too, where I was writing and editing and convening and coordinating and so on. And I did that for quite a few years. And then I had a friend who was at one of the early pre-dot-com startups with a funny name of Google. Mm -hmm. And I went to visit her a couple times. And uh, when the there was a there was a bust here, a, a hiring bust in two thousand, and not, nobody was hiring. I was between jobs, and I called her, and she said, "Oh, we just hired a marketing writer, but I'll keep you in mind." And it took a little while, but she called back and said, "You know what? We have a lot of work. Come come down and meet some people." So I started out at Google as a, actually as a contractor, and the minute I got there, I thought, "This is where I want to be." just because it was very fast moving and exciting. And I love the idea of the world's information being available. And by the way, they did have the first really functional search engine. So I got hired there in 2002 and stayed nine years. It was just a, a very memorable time. Lots of super growth was happening then. And I kind of stuck with my roots. I was on a communications team, but I stayed with my specialties of writing and editing. And I ended up managing the Google company blog, 
which spawned a lot of other company blogs that turned out this is turned out to be a good way for companies to publish their own news and information. And uh, from there, just briefly, I went to Twitter, was there about five years in the post-founder, but pre-Elon Musk era. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I had a similar role there. It was a very different company. It was a pretty chaotic company at that time still. And I uh, left there happily about seven years ago, and I've been a, an editorial consultant ever since, during which time I wrote this book. Very cool journey. And and what what was it that had you write a book? Was that what did you always have that in your mind when you're working at these other companies or did it did it just come upon you? I, I think I, I I was writing some some articles. Uh I was invited to do a, a column basically for an online publication. And I had noticed that over the years people began to send their friends to me. People would say, oh, you've got to talk to Karen. She knows everybody. And it's true. I knew a lot of people, partly because I'd had a number of jobs and the technology field has always been very fluid in terms of people changing jobs, moving on. But the interesting thing is it tends to be kind of a network-friendly kind of sector where it's not considered... You, you you want to stay in touch with your friends. It's an asset to you on your current job. You you want to kind of keep hearing what what's new and what people are doing, and it becomes a kind of currency for you as an employee and as a candidate for jobs. It, it's an asset to have a, a, a lot of contacts who you who are personal contacts, not followers, not everyone you've ever met, but just the people that you know that you can reach out to. And I had done a good job of this just because I liked being in touch with people and I was always interested to hear what was new. So I wrote an article about how to build a, a sort of network beyond any job, not not to not just use it for hunting for a job. And uh, eventually uh, that caught the attention of an agent who said, you know, this could be a good book especially considering your background. I'm an older woman. I was had worked in tech a lot, for a long time. So we tried it and uh, it, it, it seemed to resonate with a lot of kinds of people, both introverts, extroverts, uh, uh, you know, people just out of school and people who were older looking for a new job. So it just was my personal experience, but I also, I think, came up with some pretty good advice for people who really don't like the traditional idea of networking, which it seems to be, you know, go to somewhere and trade business cards and feel awkward the whole time. So true. We'll get back to the interview right after this word from our sponsor. Do you have clients using outdated and inefficient manufacturing software? If so, it's not fun. It slows down production, holds up orders, and worst of all, it can mess up the all-important numbers. Katana is here to help. With real-time data syncing for production, inventory, and accounting data, manufacturers get complete visibility over every inch of their business, and their numbers stay up to date even as orders come in. Katana also offers integrations with QuickBooks Online and Xero, which is helpful for your clients and you, their bookkeeper. Katana is excited to be offering an exclusive deal to all the successful bookkeepers out there. If you sign up for their partner program and refer clients before April 30th, they will get 30% off the first three months of their Katana subscription. You'll also earn a 20% revenue share for every client you invite. Head to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com forward slash Katana to learn more. Thank you for hearing from our sponsor. Now let's get back to the interview. I remember reading a book called Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. Ah, um, yeah, same was, idea. This is a long time ago. And and it, it, what reminded me of it was was literally your your story of of getting the job at Google was you were just you were just tending to a well that you had dug probably before, like you, you seem like you're, this is something you're really 
uh, good at, and you you nurture and build these assets of relationships that that you can use. It's not about you didn't make that relationship to find a job. You built that right as part of your your natural yeah. network. Yep. Uh, and, and so so this started to resonate, and then you decided to write a book on it. Tell us about that. Well, I I think I began to feel like I'm happy to be introduced to new people. I'm happy to advise them on, you know, here's someone else you should talk to who knows more about this than me. But I also thought it, it would be an interesting exercise for me to sort of document really a lot of very small, intuitive steps and tasks that I'm used to doing uh, to see if I can explain clearly enough kind of how, go, how to go about this without without overcomplicating it. And so a lot of the book is reassuring people, <laughs> essentially, that, you know, the simplest things that you do in terms of keeping in touch with people and saying hi when you don't have any anything specific on your mind are really fine. I mean, they're part of kind of nurturing your, your contacts and your network of people. And that can benefit you from time to time when you do have a, a specific question or need, uh, just as it would benefits them. So I see it as a, as a, as a sort of uh, two-way give and get kind of situation that's just ongoing. A- anyway, so that, was, that was the idea behind, you know, l- let me see if I can document it. And was it, what was that process like at that point, were you writing the book or was this just an experiment to see if you could unpack your, your methodology? No, I had, a, I, as I say, I had an agent and an agent shopped around my proposal. So I did have a contract to write a book and I have to say a fairly short deadline of six months. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I made it work, but uh, it was, you know, I, I had to sort of rely on a very detailed outline in order to in order to kind of keep going and, and stay on track. But having a contract and a deadline uh, made it all come very real for me. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a whole other book, a productivity yeah. book. You know, <laughs> yeah. get a deadline. <laughs> yeah, you get a deadline done, helps. Get a deadline. Yeah, yeah. I I think this book is going to be very interesting for our listener because, and we talked a little bit about it before we we started to record the show, but networking is so powerful. It's so important. And, and I mean, time after time after time, conversations with the most successful bookkeepers that I've spoken to, the network is one of the key pieces to the, how they build their business. And, and it's not just about building their business, but it's like you said, it's not just about taking from the well. It's about providing back and digging the well for others. And, mm-hmm. and whether it's your clients or your, your, your you know, inner network of family, being able to connect other people with your network is very powerful as well. However, I also have heard that people have struggles with it. They're not outgoing people per se, or would consider themselves to be introverted uh, in this in this community of, of listeners. And so I think your, your book in the way you've explained it would be very, very interesting. So I'd love to hear from you, like in, in writing the book, like what are the mistakes, some of the big ones that people make when they're out there networking? Well, maybe the first one is to think that they have to be out there networking <laughs> in, in the <laughs> sense of in the sense of you know we we think of a networking event for example and the picture i conjure up is i'm going to like something at a hotel ballroom or some kind of big event space and we're all supposed to you know bring our business cards and you know meet five new people or you know, come back with 10 cards or, you know, whatever <laughs> the thing is. In other words, the, the event is designed as a networking event where you have to have your short, pithy, here's who I am and what I do thing. And you're constantly looking beyond the person you're talking to, to the next one, right? Because you have to kind of work the room. That sounds horrible. And it turns out it's, it's horrible to a lot of people uh, who associate networking with something like that. And most of us aren't doing that most of the time for good reason. Um, As I say, I originally wrote the book with an eye towards introverts because I'm an introvert. And and when I started 
you know, talking about the book, a lot of extroverts would say, you know what, I hate networking too. <laughs> so I I said, let's let's get away from that idea, but think about the daily uh, points of contact you can have with people. Sure, occasionally you go meet new people and that's fine. And if your client, your bookkeeping client wants you to wants to introduce you to, you know, someone else who's a prospect, absolutely go have that coffee or go, you know, meet that person. However, uh, these days it could be, you know, over video chat. That's fine too. But that's always one-to-one interaction. I think that's the other thing people tend to be fearful of is thinking, oh, I have to meet a mass of people all at once. And it, networking is always one-to-one. It always comes down to that. So that may make it a little bit, feel a little safer uh, for people. But the, the thing about connecting is a couple things. One is just to keep uh, yourself open to meeting new people. Unless you have a truly full practice and you need no new clients, uh, you know, and I don't know anyone who's in that position, you 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 want to, you know, be open to meeting new people because eventually they, they might want to have you be top of mind when they need something in a, in a business sense, right? And the other thing is just the serendipity of people that you meet, that you might work with, you enjoy working with, you enjoy working on their on their business uh, problems and, and their books and so on. Those are the people to sort of pay attention to because the, these can be long-term relationships uh, of a sort. And I find that it may, it's, it's really important for people to feel like I, I'm in touch with people I like and trust, either past clients, current clients, potential future clients, as opposed to everyone I have ever met or worked for or have, have been introduced to. Because as I say, this is not a numbers game. This is not about um, you know piling up as many contacts as, as you can muster. It's much more who who do I like surrounding me? You know, even if I'm not working with them right now, even if I did in the past, or uh, even if I would like to in the future, but they're not ready. What whatever it is, and so I would imagine for bookkeepers, there's a little bit of uh, letting people know you're out there, having a website a business card, a listing somewhere that people can can go to and see. And I do think it's important to have a digital uh, presence of some sort, even if it's an about me page or something, because these days that's how people share information, right, is digitally. And then being able to um, ha- have that as, that's your calling card, but you're meeting people, you're talking to people as that happens. And then, I think the most important part of this kind of networking that's sort of casual and informal is staying in touch with people. Now, for small business owners, maybe it's having a a newsletter or a social feed where you're uh, posting things that are relevant and of interest to a potential audience and just putting your flag up that this is what I think about and do and talk about. If you're inclined to do that, not everybody needs to do that. But to have some way of ongoing presence uh, in the world, in the digital world, and also in the real world, if you're affiliated with a small business um, association or something like that, these these are the things that keep you sort of top of mind for people. We'll get back to the interview right after this word from our sponsor. Wouldn't it be amazing if your bookkeeping business ran like a world-class franchise, like a Starbucks or an Apple store, one where the business literally runs itself? You and your staff would have documented training, systems, and processes to find the clients, price the clients, convert the clients, onboard the clients, service the clients, manage the clients, find the staff, qualify the staff, hire the staff, train the staff, manage the staff. Whew, wouldn't that be a lot easier? But then what if alongside that you had a community of other bookkeeping business owners that you could mastermind with, ask questions, support, and be supported along your journey? That would likely accelerate the success of your business, right? And what if you didn't have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to purchase the franchise, pay franchise fees, give up control and ownership of your business? Instead, 
Just pay a simple monthly fee starting at $295 a month to access everything you need to scale your business. Systems for the sales, marketing, hiring, and technical bookkeeping, workflow and CRM software to manage it all, and a community to support you. That's Pure Bookkeeping. For over a decade, we've been helping thousands of bookkeepers grow their business by providing the systems and processes so you can run your business like a world-class business. Stop the trial and error game and start implementing the proven systems that will give you back your freedom, increase your income, and bring you peace of mind. Check out purebookkeeping.com for more information. That's purebookkeeping.com. Thank you for hearing from our sponsor. Now let's get back to the interview so interesting and i think relevant to our our listener is this whole idea of like the masses versus well who are the key people and you said some interesting uh criteria there it's like you 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 trust these people you like these people uh those are like two really big ones right like why network Mm -hmm. with people that you don't trust or like and so it just takes it's like we're we're thinking it's like that whole idea of like focus on your strengths versus you know, trying to become better at your weaknesses, you're actually going where you're going to get the biggest payoff is if I, if I'm really br- brutal at something, it's like, you know what, I might always be brutal at that. Whereas if I'm really <laughs> strong at something, it's like, let's get better at that. Let's leverage that. Let's leverage the part of our network that is really strong and that connects with us with, on emotional level and yeah. trust level. And then there's the other bit. It's like, yeah, these are people that could really be helpful to my business or yeah. you know, maybe I could be really helpful to their business and I like those people. So it really helps narrow down that, that thinking and, you know, versus being a farmer with, you know, thousands of acres, it's like you're tending to your garden. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, uh, you know, the, the comparable thing in working inside a company, which I learned a long time ago, is you meet a lot of people when you work inside a company, especially a big one. But, you know, you're not going to like them all. Some you may like that you never work directly with and you have a good feeling about them. And those are people that you want to meet along the way. And then people you, that you have worked with and like, you know, you feel like, We've been in the trenches together. You know, the, these are these can be lifelong relationships. And I think the same thing applies for people have in a small business. You get to know the other people in your in your community, in your area, and in your profession, you know, so that you become better known. Realtors have done this pretty well for a long time. Right? They're they're part of their community. They have their charitable aspects they're they're present you see them around now bookkeepers don't have to do that kind of outlay in terms of promote self promotion that realtors do but you know some of the same ideas uh, attach where you're just uh you're you want to be a known presence and of course you want to pay attention to who do i like or not like doing business with it's so true and and uh, with your example is if if you're a bookkeeper and you you know a realtor that has a lot of small business owners as clients and, yeah, you know, and you like exactly. them and yeah. network with them and build exactly. a relationship with them. Exactly. And so it's like, you know, it's like, you don't have to build your, your own empire of, of people. It's like we said, the little garden. And then yeah. maybe there's people that have a good garden going over there and that you can share. And yeah. I think for our listener, it really, this will, this message will resonate. And mm-hmm. I mean, there's a, uh, uh, a guest that's been on the show several times, Nancy Gwyn Vaughn. She's a, a bookkeeper for lawyers. That's her expertise. She does law, law firms. And, you know, for as long as I've known her and conversations that we've had, she's not like the, the, she wouldn't say I'm a networker. In fact, she would, she would be afraid to go and, and uh, like go and join some or go to some networking thing if it was about networking. But, you right. know, if she ever goes to an event or she goes like, she's a person that I always talk to about what that event was like, because she's met so many people, yeah. you know, she's met people, she's had conversations, she's learned about them. And, and these relationships have gone on past those events. Always, you know, I've heard if, if we had a conversation, if she was on the show right now, we'd be talking to her. She'd be, oh, I met that person at this event and that person at that meeting. It's just the natural way that she is, but when you put the overlay of the word networking over, it's like, oh, that's not me, and I'm I'm more yeah. introverted, and you know, yeah. what will I do, and who will I meet, and you know, be nervous about it. It's shifting the context of it. 
It it is exactly that. Exactly. And for me, even, I don't consider myself a networker. I do consider myself a connector. And the reason I say that is I, I'm always happy to meet new people and hear about uh, what's going on with other people because I, I like hearing stories. I guess that's part of it. But the other thing is I really enjoy being able to say, oh, you're you're also a, a, a writer, and I know someone who's looking for a writer to, for this specific project. Or because people also ask me, "Hey, do you know any writers?" <laughs> so uh, I, I'm always kind of on the lookout for, "Oh, I know someone in marketing. You should talk to this person. I know mm-hmm. someone who's starting a new business in this area. Here's someone for you to talk to." And that that's maybe a whole other skill, but that that's what keeps me interested in meeting people where I I really have nothing to do with their particular business. But it's sort of like if someone says to me, do you have a good bookkeeper? Then I would want to tell them, oh, yes, I do. And by the way, you know, or, oh, are you starting a new business? Are you thinking about, uh, you know, changing jobs or fields or something? Oh, you need, you you might want a bookkeeper. Here's someone I know. You know, that, that part of it is what really appeals to me. And that may appeal to some of your audience too. That's right. And I would say that's Nancy. Like she is she's uh-huh. a connector. She's, she's very, she, she loves to help people, you know, connect the dot somewhere else. If she hears an opportunity, she, she'll share that and connect those sure. people. And she does a really good job of it. And so she's not, it's, it's not going into network. She's going in and she's just naturally a connector like yourself probably, yeah. which is, it's valuable. It's valuable to you and it's valuable to people who know you as well. Yes. You become someone that they want to continue that relationship and keep connected because you're connecting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is perpetual. <laughs> Completely. So tell us a little bit more about the book and, and some of the, the things that our listener could expect if they were to pick up a copy of the book. Well, I would say I, I devote a, a section really to the whole this whole question of your digital presence and your social media presence. Now, I, not, since I wrote it, obviously things have changed at Twitter, for example, but, but I... Uh, I think the principles still hold that I, I do think it's important at the at a minimum for everyone to have a current LinkedIn listing. LinkedIn is like a directory, a lookup directory. And so I know that recruiters, for example, just live on LinkedIn. So they're always kind of doing searches for people. But I think for independent and small business owner bookkeepers, it's it's equally important if you, especially if you don't have a website or some other place where you have a listing, you want something that can that is can digitally be passed around and shared, and so it's 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 either the URL of a website or it's your LinkedIn listing, and LinkedIn is obviously the the easier cheaper way to go. Uh, so it is important to kind of keep that up and to have some description of what your specialty is, if if that's appropriate, uh, or a, a region that you work in, or you know whatever whatever defines your business focus. And even if it, it again, it's not a numbers question. It's much more uh, LinkedIn can be a place where you you can be found easily, and also on LinkedIn now are a couple of advantages, I think, for people. One is uh, there are just thousands of uh, LinkedIn groups, right? There's communities on LinkedIn. So whether it's bookkeeping, whether it's a a topic like legal bookkeeping, any number of things, there are probably already groups going where you can go with uh, questions or talk to people or see what, what other people are doing, that kind of thing be as active as you like on there or just lurk if, if it helps to just learn first. And the other thing LinkedIn has that may be of interest to some is they, they bought a, uh, a sort of education, a training uh, online platform called lynda.com. And now it's, I think it's called LinkedIn Learning now. A lot of video courses for all kinds of things that are sort of business and professional related. 
as well as some software tools. I'm pretty sure they have those too. So it's good to look through those in, in case there's something you want to sharpen up or investigate in terms of a new tool or something like that. But also there there's other kinds of video learnings there. Uh, I don't know if they're all free. A, a good number are. Some some may be, um, a, you know, a sort of time-limited thing you can do on your own time uh, that's, you know, six sessions or whatever uh, that you pay for. But I, I'd say that those are three parts of LinkedIn that are that are pretty important, especially to just have a, a pretty current listing. And I advise people to just once a quarter take a look and maybe freshen up your listing. If, if there's new things you've done, or if there's a new project, if you have new affiliations with uh, small business groups or neighborhood associations or anything like that, um, it's, it's good to just keep it current and make sure people know how to find you. So anyway, that's a, that, that's, that's a big, that's a big focus. That was a, a big part of one section of my book is LinkedIn. <laughs> It's a great, great one. And, and some nuggets came out of there as well, which is, it's also a really great tool to just stay connected with those that you do yeah. meet yeah. along the way. I know it, just yesterday, I don't even know how I happened upon one of my old connections and we, we, we hadn't spoken since 2019. And, and because I looked in, I'm like, oh, it's like, I went for coffee with him and he was going through a tumultuous time in his life. And at the time, a fellow business, you know, his business had some issues with his partner and whatnot. Anyways, point is, is like, like it seems like yesterday, but it's been since 2019. This is like several yeah. years we haven't spoken. I'm like, how? Yeah. And I've, but I always think about him and I'm like, I wonder how he's doing. And so I just reached out and said, hey, we haven't spoken. I see that, you know, and I could see that he had landed, you know, he's created a new business and, and it looks like it's doing well. And I'm like, it, beautiful. I see the history in the in the messenger. So I know what we talked about last. And and it's like, hey, we haven't spoken until 2019. It's like, you know, how are you doing? And, and at some point, I'd love to go for coffee with them again. So it's just this kind of exactly. powerful tool to just keep those and nurture those relationships. And he's one of those people that I like, I trust, and, and I want to be part of him. But like whatever reason in my life right now, I don't have time to you know, spend as much time with them, but I can still keep that relationship going. And Absolutely. if it's meant to be, it'll be, right? Absolutely. That, that's another kind of element that I talk about in my book, which is the idea of having light touch with people, meaning it, it's it's just or loose touch. It's just that occasionally, we're so used to it now with so many digital tools that it's perfectly fine to have three years go by and then kind of pick it up again and say, hey, you know, it's been a while. I'd, I'd love to catch up with you. Can we can we have a, a Zoom call or uh, can we meet for coffee or have a phone call or whatever 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 like you'd like to choose? Um, and to just have it be intermittent like that is totally fine. Most people kind of accept that and and I think enjoy that as opposed to it being too frequent or too constant. But people get anxious about well, I haven't, but I haven't, you know haven't talked to them. What do I say? And in an odd way, the pandemic gives us a perfect excuse to say, hey, we've all been kind of underground or we've, you know, we've had this strange couple of years here. I've just, I've just, you've, I've been thinking of you. How are you? Can we catch up soon? And I'd say that in combination with the other way to stay in loose touch with people is if you see something that an article, a news story that reminds you of them or makes you think about, oh, this is something they're they're involved in or they're interested in. Send that along and just say, hey, I thought of you when I read this. How are you? Like, yeah. that's another, you know, these are the sorts of things that kind of keep a relationship alive in a digital sense, which is very legitimate for then picking it up in real life. That's right. That's right. And, and really it's, 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 we, we don't know, like for instance, this contact I'm talking about, it's like, I don't know that, uh, there's no reason f f that I know of that we should be connected from a business standpoint or, or anything like that. It's just, he's, yeah. he feel, falls into those. I like him. I trust him. And he, he's, he's in another person in business for himself. And so those three things, it's like, 
yeah, there's something there and we've, we, we have great conversations when we're together. We nurture that. Maybe that turns into something, but I know that I could always ask him of something and he, and he, you know, he likely knows the same of me. If he ever needed something, he would reach out to me. So there's those relationships yeah. that, you know, and it's kind of one of those things too, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, even if I just hadn't, maybe I just, oh, I need to get something from George. Like he, he has something that he can help me with. For me to just reach out, if he if that was a problem for George, then he's not maybe meant to be in my close yeah. sort of, you know, that that's right. he doesn't obviously like or trust me. So then that's perfect, right? It's like yeah. not meant to sort of go together. I remember there was someone who told me a story about how they had, they had person reached out to them and then they sent back, well, just, you know, here's my LinkedIn calendar, gra- or not LinkedIn calendar, online calendar, something yeah. like that. And he's like, he said that the person was so offended that this person would ask for like, send them this like thing, like a, uh, you look on my a calendar, scheduler. Yeah. you know, scheduler, like how, you know, belittling to me. And it's like, the reality is that it's perfect how it went because like, obviously if you want, you, you know, do you want to do business with or work, be associated with someone who's going to take that kind of a, an emotional upset over something along those lines? It's like, we, we, we may be worried too much about, disrupting people or interrupting people or, or not fitting into them perfectly is because like, you know what, if they don't like, like it, then it's like perfect. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, then go yeah. somewhere else. Right. That's right. And, and so, uh, that was one thing I thought of when I, when just as you were talking, is like, yeah, like if I need to reach out to somebody, I should just do it. Right. It's like, who cares if it's been 20 years? Yeah, um, exactly. You know, they and, were a friend of course, then, we still a friend wanna- now. You want a, you want to give them a little context if it's been twenty years. Like this is why I'm reaching out. Yes, right. This exactly. is specifically what I'm looking for, um, and I'd like to hear what you've been up to. That's right. That's right. right. You, it's like you we want can to, yeah. it, even though we haven't both had time to to yeah. do something. You know, it's like we all live our life, and you know that's the thing about networking and and connecting is that. Uh, really is listening and, to, and and coming up with this and my thoughts is is that's what it's about. It's like there's so many people in the world that can be very overwhelming to think you got to keep in touch with everybody. And yeah. You really can't. It's just yeah. not possible. Yeah, no, it's not possible. But it, it, you you want to pay attention to the kind of serendipity of who comes to mind. That's right. right? Uh, or who. You know, I, I often use the example of like a sports team. Like I, I personally not a big sports fan, but I have friends who are. And if I know that there was a big game or, a, you know, a championship or whatever, I, I pay a little attention to who won if I know they were a super fan of one side or the other. And I can at least say to them, you know, sorry about that defeat or <laughs> congratulations on that win. And it made me think of you. <laughs> and that's why I'm in touch, you know. So it, there's a little bit of sort of personalization that comes with that too. Absolutely. Some really great tips there. And and also, it doesn't have to be a lot here is what I'm, no. I'm hearing from you. It's like just little tiny tidbits spent, you know, a minute a day even, yeah. you know, like reach out to one person yeah. uh, a week. That's 52 people in a, in a year. Uh, yeah. You know, that's, that's a yeah. large number. That's a large number. Yeah, so exactly. There's a lot that can be done in a very little bit of time that can be very powerful and, and satisfying as well uh, for, for, you know, enhancing our own experience of life. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, part of, part of the appeal for doing any of this for me is understanding that, you know, people are going through common things uh, together. So like I say, the pandemic was, was one of those things that was a perfect opportunity in the, in the throes of it to reach out and say, let's catch up. And I did do that with people I hadn't physically spoken to in 10 years. I might've done, you know, talked to them online because people moved around and, and even moved permanently to a new place or did something else that was different. So it, it's really a way to feel connected to other people and to feel like we're all going through something together. Recently, I've had a number of friends who have elderly parents who are on the decline, and I've already been through that. So I can, I want to hear how what their experience is like, and then I can also sort of gauge that against my experience and see, because that's going to be something that's going to keep happening for a certain group of people. So 
you, you just, you, you, it makes you feel like you kind of are connected in a way that's, that's human as well as the professional ways you could be connected. So true. So true. Well, this is, this has been absolutely fantastic, Karen. And uh, I'd love for you to share a little bit about where our listener can get access to the book or if there's resources that you want to point to anything along those lines. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so my website, I do have a website and having the book made me have a website, by the way, um, nice. uh, it's karenwickery.com. That's K A R E N W I C K R E.com. And there you can read more about me. You can, there are pointers to order the book from, you know, whatever source you, what you like. And I also have a page of resources that was essentially a lot of background reading I did for the book and references that are in the book. And so that, that may be useful to some people. Wonderful. We'll have that link in the show and just literally recorded a podcast episode very recently where the number one thing that the, this was a successful bookkeeper uh, business owner that was on the, on the show. And she said the number one thing that she's realized in her life is the learning is constant learning and improvement upon the skills that we have as leaders, as business owners, as bookkeepers, is what's helped her be successful. And this is an opportunity for learning, additional learning and really taking on being great at either networking or connecting. And and what a wonderful opportunity for us to have you on our show and to share this with us. So thank you, Karen, for your generosity in doing that. Oh, thank you, Michael. I've really enjoyed it. This has been our pleasure. And with that, we wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. To learn more about today's wonderful guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.